In this video, I want to talk about how to work on a team inside of a scene file in Unity, because a common problem when you're working on a team inside of Unity is you will have multiple people trying to access the same files. And then when you try use something like version control, you will have merge conflicts. And one of the easiest ways to prevent merge conflicts is to make sure you separate out your files that you're working with into separate prefabs. So I'm gonna show how to do that. The most common conflict that you're gonna come across is the scene file. And you might have a level designer that's building mechanics and then you may have an environment artist who wants to go and add some art into the level or maybe a sound designer who wants to add some audio to the level. And we wanna figure out how we can work in separate pieces instead of all working inside of the scene file. So just to show you inside of my, my version control, I'm using Git Kraken just because I think it's very easy to understand visually what's going on in version control. But right now I'm up to date, everything is current in my project and I'm gonna make some changes and show you what, what will happen. So right now I'm inside of my level and let's say that I am a sound designer who wants to add some audio to these placeholder assets. Maybe I want it to sound like a village or a busy road or whatever. And if I start adding audio here, let me right click and go to audio, audio source. You know, maybe I add a couple audio sources around the scene. And then I can assign some clips here, but it doesn't matter. You'll see that I'm putting new objects inside of the scene file right here. If I save this and I go back and look at version control and I click here, it'll show you, you, you can either see it in a tree view or you can see it in a path. Either way, this is the name of my scene file. And you'll see that I have made changes to the scene file. And if I was also an artist and I come in, came in here and did the same thing and I moved these buildings around or you know, added another art pass, we'd have two separate people making changes to the same file and we'd have a merge conflict. So what I wanna show you is how we can make changes to the scene without affecting the scene file. Now, you know, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna discard all these changes just to, you know, revert back to where we were. I'm gonna reset and you'll see that I can reload and then none of the audio sources that I placed here. And I would have lost work if there was a merge conflict. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to set this up properly. I made a just an empty grouping file right here called level layers. And inside of here, I'm gonna make a few layers for different artists or different people on my team who may need to work on in the set, in the scene. So first we'll do a, we'll call this main menu audio. Make sure that everything is zeroed out. Super, super important. Zero, zero. We might have another one called main menu art. That'd be fine. You could also call this environment. And now that we have this set up, the trick is that we are going to turn these higher level objects into prefabs so that whenever the art team does anything under this prefab, it will be referenced in the scene right here, but we're not actually making changes to the scene itself. We're just making changes to this prefab. And I'll show you even further if I take the environment that I have already and I drag it into the prefab like that, then what I wanna do is I wanna take this top level object and turn that into a prefab. And I'll do the same thing with the other one. Okay, so now I have an art prefab referenced in my level and I have an audio prefab referenced in my level. Now here's the important part. All of this that I'm doing right now, I, this is making changes to the scene file. So your level designer would have to set this stuff up first. But once I have this created, so I have these different level layers and everything is inside of these prefabs. So you can see right here, the environment is all associated right here in this prefab. Once I have this, I do want to commit. And you'll see over here, if you look at the changes now, I'm gonna put this in path view. You'll see that we have a new prefab that we're adding. We have a new, for both audio and art. 
and we are making changes to the scene file. This is intended. So I'm gonna stage these changes and I'm gonna commit. I'm gonna say something like um, set up level prefabs. Get out a description there if you want. So now that we have that set up, let's look at how different team members can make changes to these prefabs without actually changing the scene. Let's make our changes inside of our scene and look at how that affects the scene file versus the prefab. So right now we're up to date inside of our version control. We, you know, we, if we wanted to push this to the repo, we could too, let's just do that optional, but um, we're up to date, project is current. And so now let's say I want to add my audio sources just like I was doing before to my level. Now as a sound designer, I would go inside of my prefab and everything underneath the prefab, so all the child objects, will be associated with the prefab. So if I right click and I make a new audio source, something like this, take this and I you know, say, this is the building, some chatter or something like that. And this is my busy road over here. And these are some birds or whatever. I'm placing my audio in the scene. And then once I do this, I need to make sure that this gets saved to my prefab. So again, this is this is kind of like saving your changes. So make sure you click on the prefab that you are working in. You go to overrides and you hit apply all. If you're in an older version of Unity, this is gonna look a little bit different, but make sure that you save the changes from this prefab down into the prefab inside of your project. That's all that's doing. Now, if I jump back into version control, you'll see something. You'll see that I've made changes to my prefab here, but I have not made changes to my scene file, which is exactly what I want. If I was a sound designer, I wouldn't want to override the changes inside of the scene file that the level designer was doing. So now, you know, I could commit this if I want. Um, you know, let's commit this and say uh, sound design pass or something. Cool, so I've only affected the prefab. You could do the same thing with the art. So, you know, maybe we add a couple more buildings or whatever. And remember, as long as we're underneath this prefab as we're working, we can still make changes to the scene. These are just representative. Okay. And then again, make sure you save your changes that you just made to this art prefab, apply. We'll go back into our version control. And you'll see if I click now, you'll see that I have changes to my art prefab, but not my audio and not my scene. So I can stage changes and say art pass complete, commit. See separate changes to separate files, great. Now let's look at a situation where we accidentally made changes to the scene file. So in this case, let's say we were the audio person and um, you know maybe, maybe we accidentally bumped this this the movement of this file, right? We had it zeroed out, but we accidentally dragged this, um, moved it around a little bit. So we accidentally made a change to our prefab, but since it's made on this parent object, that it's it's actually being referenced by the scene, not the prefab. So if I save this and I go back, and let's say we also did some changes to you know, this as well. Come back to version control. And make sure that you make sure that you apply your changes to that prefab. So if we go back into version control, you'll see. I'm the sound designer and I accidentally made changes to the audio prefab and the scene, that's not good. If this happens and you know the, the changes to the scenes were accidental, then all you need to do is make sure that you discard these changes. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the things that I do want. So this prefab right here, I'm gonna stage this file. So this will get committed, this will not. Um, and then I'm going to right click and just say discard these changes, right? So just got rid of the scene file changes right there. So if I come back into the scene, you'll see that my audio here, this is still fine, but 
this accidental move that I made right here, this has been undone, which is good. So if I come back into my version control, you'll see that I still have my changes for my audio. I just got rid of the accidental changes I made to the scene. So if you didn't mean to change the scene, make sure you discard that and make sure that you work within a prefab. Cause again, I can just say audio adjustments. Commit. And then, you know, maybe at this point I'm everything's looking good. I can I can push this to my branch and then merge that into master later. This, that's a much larger topic. So now I, this is the workflow. You can make as many of these level layers as you want. Um, as long as the things that you're doing can be contained inside of the prefab, then you should be good to go. You may also want, for example, a main menu collisions. Um, you know, you, maybe you also want main menu level triggers or maybe gameplay. I mean, it really just depends on your team and what you're trying to do. Just really be aware of when you're making changes to a prefab and when you're making changes to a scene. And if you want people to be able to split work and be able to work out of a prefab instead of a scene file, then you can always split that stuff up. Just remember that when you create the prefabs initially, you will be making changes to the scene file, so you will need to do that all at once. But then after that, get your project up to date and then just work out of the prefab. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully it helps you understand a little bit more clearly how you can work smarter with uh, multiple team members, especially with artists and sound designers and all these other people who want to make changes to the map. Don't all try and pass the scene file around. It's very inefficient. Just whenever possible, work within prefabs and you know try to break that out when you can.